Animation covers a wide range of styles and techniques. From rotoscoping, stop motion, claymation, there's so much variety in the medium. But today we are going to look at one of the least used but most interesting techniques that animation has to offer. Or maybe it's considered film. Or maybe it's considered puppetry. Regardless, we are examining its roots, creation, and most importantly, its future. This is the weird and wild world of Gekimation. Before we can talk about Gekimation, we'll have to look even further back to a completely different art form, Kamishibai. Kamishibai, literally paper play, is an old style of Japanese theater. It combines a single person performance with detailed and elaborate paintings. <laughs> While the exact start of Kamishibai has been lost to the ages, it rose in popularity in 1930s Tokyo. Performers would narrate stories depicted by a series of paintings. This was essentially the anime of its day. The medium would only gain in popularity after World War II. People, especially children, were seeking a form of cheap escapism. Kamishibai performers were more than happy to provide the entertainment, so long as kids kept buying sweets from them. You see, the performance itself was free, funded entirely by selling snacks before and after. Basically like a movie theater without tickets. The revenue would be used to commission and rent paintings from new artists. These artists would be asked to draw popular themes and stories. Meaning that despite being a medium built around the high art of painting, Kamishibai stories were often pulpy and crowd-pleasing. In fact, one of Japan's first superheroes, Ogon Bat, made his first appearance in Kamishibai plays. But stories weren't limited just to action and superheroics either. The basis for Gegege no Kitaro was originally a Kamishibai play, starring a much more monstrous looking version of everyone's favorite cute yokai boy. But the story of Kamishibai does not have a happy ending. The art form fell into decline, unsurprisingly, as television became more widespread across Japan. It still exists, mainly as a novelty to harken back to older and simpler styles of storytelling. But more importantly, it would inspire later works and lead to the creation of an entirely new art form. While characters like Ogon Bat and Kitara would continue to gain popularity in new mediums, the paper play would resurface in a very unusual way. Instead of using traditional animation, the 1976 adaptation of Kazuo Umezu's Cat-Eyed Boy used a number of paper cutouts to tell its dark tales. This would be what we know today as Gekimation. Gekimation differs from Kamishibai in some pretty significant ways. Instead of using still paintings, Gekimation uses multiple paper cutouts layered onto each other to create a sense of depth. The result is uncanny to say the least. Things move with a certain stiffness and have this tactile feel to them. The result is perfect for the dark and twisted tales found in Cat-Eyed Boy. The original manga, in true Umezu fashion, was a series of short horror stories, all connected by the titular Cat-Eyed Boy character. The boy himself is usually more of a passive element in each story, almost like a crypt keeper that just happens to get involved in the plot every so often. However, in the anime, he takes a much more active role. The story is now expanded to include an origin for the cat-eyed boy, and an overarching goal, to be reunited with his lost mother. Now with this yokai-human hybrid backstory, the cat-eyed boy is much more of your typical 70s young boy protagonist. He even borders on similar heroics to Ogon Bat, facing off against other villainous yokai. Or to put it simply, he's the perfect mix of pulpy elements for this evolution of Kamishibai. 
But while the narrative elements remain the same, the technique is completely different. Scenes are painted with much more detail and care than if this had been traditionally animated, which really works for this creepy collection of yokai. Characters now have the ability to move around, puppeteered almost like a children's pop-up book. In the first episode, there's a brief segment of traditional animation thrown in for extra emphasis, conveying motion that would have been too hard to accomplish with just paper puppets. A lot of shots place a character between a background and foreground, done clearly to highlight the actual depth that these characters exist in. This was done not just for budgetary reasons, but with a stylistic intent. However, this style may have been too ahead of its time. The Cat-Eyed Boy remains a relatively obscure anime even in Japan. In fact, copies of the anime are extremely hard to come by. Only a handful of episodes had a DVD release, with the only complete home media release being a Laserdisc collection. But despite fading quickly into relative obscurity, the Gekimation style would be revived nearly 40 years later, and this time, it would reach international levels of attention. The Gekimation technique would be mimicked in anime like Yami Shibai or games like Danganronpa. However, while visually similar, both use digital animation made to look like it's made out of paper or cardboard. True Gekimation wouldn't be attempted again until the arrival of an up-and-coming director. Ujicha is probably the most famous person, if not the only person currently, to use the Gekimation style. And he's clearly been passionate about it for a long time. あの、書かれた漫画の妖怪伝、あ、じゃあよく、ごめんなさい。ね、猫猫像っていう漫画があるんですけど、えっと、それを1976年にあの、テレビでえ、アニメ化しようっていうことになって、え、企画されたのが
、それこそさっき言っていただいたんですけど、ドラゴンボールとか、伊藤淳二さんとかですかね、他に。But as he alluded to, Ujicha's biggest influence is no doubt Kazuo Umezu. Being a self proclaimed fan of the Cat Eyed Boy anime, Ujicha owes so much of his style to the older Umezu works. そういう二段階で僕の映画も見てもらえたりしたら嬉しいなと。僕と同じような体験をしてもらえたら嬉しいなって思います。And because Umezu is such a strong influence, it's no surprise that Ujicha's work reflects those pulpy themes of sci-fi and horror that we can trace all the way back to Kamishibai. Despite this connection, it seems like following these themes was not a conscious decision. SF と、えー、ホラーもちろんそうなんですけど、えー、とコメディの部分も、うん、あのすごい好きで、まことちゃんとかもそうですし、うん、その3つかなと思うんですよ、梅津和夫さんから受けてる影響っていうのは、うん。ずっとホラーっていうのはすごい実は苦手だったんですけど、あの大学生の頃に自分の机の上に梅津和夫さんの「洗礼」っていう本が置いてあって。えー、その本をたまたまあの開いてみたらすごい面白くてそこからどんどんのめり込んでいきましただから特に自分からこうホラーとか SF をやろうと思ってやってるわけではなくてたまたま自分が読んでいって楽しい面白いなと思うものが SF とかホラーだっただけでそういうのを In 2013, Ujicha would finally release his first feature film, Burning Buddha Man. He would follow up this film in 2018 with Violence Voyager, which has since garnered itself somewhat of a cult following. Violence Voyager definitely left a mark overseas, especially with film weirdos like me, causing a lot of people to look back at Ujicha's work and discover Burning Buddha Man. The leap from 70s Gekimation to these two films is Frankly astounding. While Cat Eyed Boy had a team in a studio behind it, Ujicha is animating these largely by himself with arguably better quality. There were a lot of weird pitfalls that I neglected to mention in Cat Eyed Boy, effects that didn't quite work. But Ujicha clearly studied and learned from these mistakes, and as a result, his films are much more consistent in quality. In fact, I would say that Violence Voyager probably sits at the pinnacle of geki mated media. It has pretty much everything that you want, from the pulpy themes to just the craftsmanship of the paintings. And now that it's aimed at a much more older and niche audience, Ujicha doesn't hold back on showing some truly disturbing visuals. However, these films are not without their own issues. And their director is his own worst critic. が自分の中では結構不満が多かったんですよやりたいことがまだまだできてないことが多かったんですけどだから2本目は今からやってやるぞっていう気持ちですごい燃えてました実際いろいろ新しいことが試せたのですごい良かったと思ってます So were you not satisfied with the live action element? In、uh, Burning Buddha Man,、uh, and is that why it is not in Violence Voyager? Ah, one of the most important things is that the producer of 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 t o k すごいもっと自由に作らせていただけましたし、安西さんまたあの
、バイオリンスボイジャーの時も実写シーンがを入れたいって言われたんですけど、<笑>断りました。Recently, Ujicha has moved from the world of film into the world of television drama. He would work on Geki Mated segments for a live action Netflix series called Yokai Share House. Drama の producer さんと監督さんがあのそういう Yokai Share House の中に出てくる昔話のパートを作りたいっていうので何かいい映像手法はないかなっていうのであの調べたはるときにあの僕の映像をなんか YouTube とかで見つけてで直接ご依頼くださりました映画を作ってると結構何年に1回とかしかあの作品を発表できないのが結構大変でドラマだと数ヶ月作ってもう発表できてあの反応もいただけるのでこういうのはできる限りこういうお仕事はしたいなとは思ってます Ultimately, when it comes to Gekimation, There's no one with more passion for it than Ujicha. やっぱり劇名ションっていうものがこのままなくなってしまうのがすごい嫌だったので始めたっていうのも一つ理由としてあったんですけどそういう意味ではもう今「妖怪シェアハウス」とか僕の映画とかで見てくれてた子供とかがまた刺激を受けて次どんどんたくさんの人が劇名ションっていうのを作ってくれたら嬉しいなとは思ってます。And I couldn't help but feel this creative energy when I met him in person. That's right, I've kind of buried the lead on this, but the interview clips that you've been watching were filmed by me at Ujicha's own studio. And after talking with him, I earnestly do want to see Geki Mation continue as an art form. And to do that, I'm going to put his words to the test. We're going to see if Geki Mation is literally something that even a child can do. I'm going to make my own Geki Mated short film, and I can think of no better story to tell. Than when I actually got to meet Ujicha himself. It was a hot, sunny day as me, my best friend Alex, and our English to Japanese interpreter arrived in Kyoto. This was my first summer in Japan, so I was learning just firsthand how excruciatingly hot it could be. But it could have been Christmas Day, and I still would have been drenched in sweat. This wasn't a hot sweat, it was a nervous one. I was about to do not just my first in person interview, but my first interview in Japanese. Even with an interpreter, this was still entirely new to me. The three of us approached the small back streets of Kyoto. At first, we weren't completely sure where Ujicho's studio was until we were flagged down by a woman. This was Adachi. Ujicha's agent, who I had spoken to by email. She was incredibly nice and waited with us outside of Ujicha's studio. And it wasn't long before the man himself actually stepped outside. He greeted us, having literally just gotten out of the shower, looking like he had only just woken up. It was then that I felt a pit in my stomach. This was really happening. I was really meeting him for real. But I quickly forgot about that. Because as Ujicha opened his studio door, I was greeted by a wave of familiar movie posters, kaiju toys, and manga that were strewn about. I had to stop myself from constantly glancing around the studio as I set up my tripod and microphone. At this point, there was no turning back. I hit record on the camera and quickly began to ask my questions. I struggled to find my voice at first. It was difficult to even ask my questions comfortably. But as I continued talking, I became less afraid. After asking about his influences, I realized we both had a shared passion for Kazuo Umezu manga. And when he pulled out his cat eyed boy laser disc collection, I began to feel like I was talking to a friend. After wrapping up the last of my questions, Adachi asked for a group photo. My initial fears and worries had subsided, and I left that day no longer feeling the sweat of fear. But instead, the sweat of a hot summer day.
Working with Gekimation materials gave me a hands-on appreciation for Ujicha's process and style. While the obvious advantages of being able to repurpose art is clear, it still takes a lot of time and effort. Maybe more than I had in me because this video ended up taking extra long to make. But I really have to thank my English to Japanese interpreter who was fantastic at helping me interview Ujicha. And a very, very big thank you to Alex Murphy who drew the Gekimation materials for me. You can follow her Twitter or Instagram or just go ahead and follow her. And of course, this video would not be possible without the man himself, Ujicha letting me borrow him for an afternoon and ask him a bunch of dumb questions. So if this video made you interested in Gekimation, please check out Violence Voyager and Burning Buddha Man. Or maybe try doing Gekimation yourself. Ujicha has taken this medium and crafted a whole style and world out of it. And I'm very excited to see what he ends up doing in the future within the wild world of Gekimation.